Hello everyone, welcome to Data Science with Harshit. My name is Harshit Tyagi. I'm a data science instructor and mentor. So, in the previous video, we discussed how to create an ideal Python environment for data science. And we looked at how we fired up a Jupyter Notebook and uh, to start off with our project. So, in this video, I'm going to cover what are the basics of uh, Jupyter Notebook, what is it, what are the different elements, and how should you get started with Jupyter Notebooks to start your journey on any data science project. So, getting started with Jupyter Notebooks coming right up. So we all know Python can be done in many ways and common methods include running Python scripts using a terminal or using the Python shell uh, by simply typing in Python and a equals 5, let's say you want to look at A, A is 5. So you can run Python uh, using the Python shell but with data analysis or data science making the news these days, we have uh, IPython based Jupyter notebooks that are being used by beginners and experts alike. So IPython, if I talk about IPython, uh, IPython provides a uh, REPL, uh, read, evaluate, print, loop, a shell for uh, interactive Python development. It enables us to visualize uh, the charts and plots using the GUI toolkits and provides a kernel for Jupyter as well. So if you want to look at IPython, you can simply type in IPython in your terminal, hit Okay, command not found. So let's first thing that you need to do is in the previous video, we discussed about creating an uh, uh, Conda environment. So we created a, uh, an environment called Conda DSWH underscore ENV. And let's put activate the environment. So if you want to know about how to create an environment, I have put down the link uh, to my previous video in the description so you can take a look. So we have our environment activated now. So let's type IPython. All right, so this is going to start an IPython shell for us. So this is the interactive Python development uh, environment that IPython basically provides. And uh, so here also you can uh, run your Python. Uh, so let's say I want to see five plus six. Okay, and let's say I want to import my library. Let's say matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. Okay, let's see if this imports. Yep, uh, so this has imported the library. And now if I want to uh, plot uh, a simple chart, let's say so. Uh, let's pass in the data one two three comma four and yep uh, so i've got this matplotlib object and when i do plt dot show uh, let's see what we get so basically we have this line uh, drawn for us so basically using the ipython shell i can do a bunch of stuff and it provides a kernel on which the jupyter notebook is uh, based so so Project Jupyter succeeded uh, IPython notebook and is based on uh, IPython as it makes use of its kernel to do all the computation and then serves the output uh, to the front end interface. So the kernel provides the multiple language support uh, to Jupyter notebooks, be it R, Python, Julia, or any other uh, language and it extends the IPython store to output features to build a super intuitive and interactive browser based GUI. Uh, for our series Data Science with Hershey, uh, we'll be focusing on learning Python using Jupyter Notebooks. So under the title, we have uh, the menu bar, which has a lot of options. Uh, so we have file, edit, view, insert. So the most common ones are the file, uh, in case you want to create a new notebook, open uh, an already existing notebook, or if you want to download your notebook as an HTML, there are different ways to download your notebook. Then you have insert, in case you want to insert a cell above or below, 
then there are several different ways to run uh, the cells uh, you, if you want to run all the cells run all if you want to run on you if you are on a particular cell and if you want to run all the cells above that particular cell then you hit run all above and similarly run all below so then we have different kernel settings interrupt to basically if let's say if your cell has stuck and it's not yielding any output so you can uh, click on this interrupt option and there are different other options that you can take a look at they have uh, edit cut cells copy cells paste and these icons let me go through these icons so we have plus to add uh, a new cell then if you want to delete the cell you can simply cut the cell using the scissor and then let's say you have uh, two cells which is let's say this one's one this one's two and in case you want to move your uh, uh, number one cell to the top you can click on you can move around uh, your cells like using these up and down arrow keys so in case you want to run this cell click on run or you what you can do is uh, you know simply press shift plus enter on your keyboard and that will run the cell for you then we have this kernel uh, the, so the kernel is basically uh, a program that runs uh, and interprets the user's code so there are different kernels for different languages and Jupyter Notebooks uses uh, IPython kernel uh, to execute the Python code now the kernel executes the code uh, in the cell and then it returns the output if any to the front-end interface and the state of kernel basically pertains uh, to the entire document and not just an individual cell so if I click uh, if let's say I type a equals 5 and run this cell so a would be uh, available for me in the next cell so the kernel state does not pertains to a single cell uh, it uh, pertains to the entire document so we have four different types of uh, cell in a Jupyter notebook uh, we have code uh, which is where we write up Python code and uh, markdown uh, row and b convert and heading so I'm on this particular cell uh, the selected cell is a code cell as I can see in the drop down so let's say if I write some code here uh, let's try to import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and again you can either uh, use the run button or hit shift plus enter on your keyboard then let's plot uh, uh, the same data uh, 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 and then enter plt dot show and when I run this okay great so we have this plot uh, which is plotting 1 2 3 4 this data that I provided so I the code cell can execute my Python code uh, now when I click on this let's say I uh, I go to this cell I hit markdown so this is basically a markdown cell which is uh, the text uh, so whenever we want to add documentation by putting in some text uh, formatted using markdown so I can add some markdown uh, here so let's say I go to this cell I convert this into a markdown and I hit hashtag okay matplot lib plot I hit enter and this is basically my heading uh, matplotlib uh, plot so there are different ways to write markdown and I'll add the link to the cheat sheet uh, to learn uh, markdown if you want to take a look at that uh, then row and b convert is basically just another tool to convert your Jupyter notebook into HTML PDF or any other file format and heading is simply your this is a level 2 heading so this is simply you can achieve sim, uh, this heading cell by adding two hashtags in your markdown cell so this is the same as your markdown simply a heading version uh, okay beat any type of cell uh, you'll have to run all of them using uh, either the run button or shift plus enter on your keyboard so once you're done with your analysis your work your notebook is ready 
you might want to share it with your boss or with your potential employer or your collaborators. So there may be different reasons for you to share your notebooks. Some, with some people, you might want to share your code for which you can use GitHub. And for some others, you might just want to share a pre-rendered static version of your notebook. So there are several ways. The first one is you can use the download as option under the file menu. So you can download your notebook as a PDF HTML or any other uh, option that are uh, that's available to you then we have github you, you can share the link of your github public repository or add collaborators to your private project now github has over 2 million notebooks hosted and it's a common place for all the Jupyter uh, notebook lovers and also github has an integrated uh, support for ipnb files both on uh, uh, it suggests on its website and in the repositories as well. So the other tool is you can use NB Viewer, Notebook Viewer. Uh, so NB Viewer is one of the most popular notebook renderers uh, on the web. And if you already have your notebook somewhere hosted online, be it on GitHub or on Bitbucket or any other place, uh, NB Viewer basically will render your notebook and it will provide a shareable URL link for you as well. So that was all about Jupyter Notebooks. So now we are at a place where we can get started with uh, any of our data analysis or data science project using Jupyter Notebooks. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about uh, the basics or the fundamentals of Python that you are going to need in order to move forward on your path to learning data science. And uh, so if you found this video useful, don't forget to like the video and comment down below if you have any suggestions, anything to add to the material that I just taught or how you found this video useful. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the upcoming videos on data science. So. Till then, uh, stay tuned and keep learning data science with Harshit.